That is great. Everybody say next Sunday with more passion next Sunday. Next Sunday, we are starting a brand new message series called The Lyrics of Christmas. Do you realize Thursday is the 1st of December? And, and we're going to be looking at some of the popular Christmas carols. We're going to be singing Christmas carols in the service. So make sure you come along and be part of this amazing season. Do you realize that Jesus is the reason for the season? So make sure you come along. How many of you, you got your Christmas trees up? Put your hand up if you got your Christmas tree up. Our Christmas tree went up. Uh, some of you are like, it's too early. You know, well, it's going to be next week up anyway. So we started our Christmas um, tree pro um, process yesterday. Uh, the kids were very excited. The boys were pumped and uh, got a bit stressful in the end because uh, uh, they both wanted to be the chief Santa and they both wanted to do this and that. And, uh, and finally, they went to bed and I sat by the tree and I thought, Christmas is just around the corner. Who's looking forward to Christmas? That's great. Well, we're going to get into God's Word this morning. If you want to take your notes out, how many fishermen do we have in the house this morning? Give me a wave if you're a fisherman. You love fishing. Raise your hand. All right, we've got a few fishing uh, experts and wannabes and, you know, great professionals in the room. Well, I love fishing. I've only been fishing four or five times. Uh, I remember the first time I went fishing with a pastor friend of mine who invited me to come fishing. And um, 20 minutes into our fishing trip, uh, I caught my first fish. Let me tell you, my confidence went to a whole nother level. Uh, and then 20 minutes later, I caught my second fish. And I, taught, I told my pastor friend uh, that the favor of God was on my side of the boat. Uh, and, uh, and then about... About 30 minutes later, I, I got this big bite. I can tell, my goodness, I was like, I've, I think I've caught a shark. I was like, I know, I know. I was like, the Lord is on my side. The favor of the Lord uh, is on my side. I was so busy uh, trying to reel this big fish in, and it was a big fish. But do you realize the Bible says pride goes before the fall? Uh, and just as I was about to reel it in, the fishing rod broke, uh, and it wasn't my fishing rod either. Uh, and my pastor friend said, uh, that is a very expensive fishing rod. In fact, that is my favorite fishing fishing rod, I gave it to you. Uh, and he was, my, he was my boss at that time too. I was like, if Jesus wants to come back, now is a good time. And then he said, grab the fish, at least grab the fish. But by the time I worked out where the fish was, the fish swam away. I, I broke the fishing rod. All I can say is I haven't been invited since then. Uh, but today, uh, I want us to look at one of the greatest fishing stories ever. Uh, in the book of Luke chapter 5, I want us to look at one of the most incredible miracles that ever took place in the Bible. Now, we need to remember that four of the 12 disciples of Jesus were fishermen. Peter, Andrew, James, and John. But before they met Jesus, these four guys had a fishing business. Uh, and there was this time they'd been out all night fishing, all night, and they caught nothing. They had worked hard all night and for nothing, I'm sure they were exhausted, tired, discouraged, frustrated. They came back with empty buckets. So here they were cleaning their fishing nets on the shore. Next minute, Jesus shows up on the scene and there was a large crowd gathering to hear Jesus teach and preach. And, and so Jesus says to them, you know, can I use your boat as a platform to speak from? Everywhere Jesus went, people were drawn to his teachings, to his miracles. So now Jesus is saying to these disciples who'd been out all night fishing and they caught nothing and they're exhausted, they're tired. And Jesus like, hey, can I use your fishing boat as a, as a platform? Let's look at the story, Luke chapter 5, verses 1 to 7. One day, as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the Word of God. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push it out into the water. So he sat in the boat and told the crowds from there. When he, heard, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Now go out where it is deeper. Everybody say deeper. And let down your nets to catch some fish. Master Simon replied, We worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, 
But if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. And this time their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. Uh, 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 the, the, the nets began to break. A shout for help brought their partners in another boat. And soon both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. Here's the point of this um, amazing miracle that took place. Listen to this carefully. They caught more in 10 minutes with Jesus than they did with 10 hours without him. They caught more in 10 minutes with Jesus than they, had, they were doing for 10 hours without him. Now that's what's called a miracle of acceleration. A miracle of acceleration. That's when God speeds up the natural process. Anyone in this room, you are believing for a miracle of acceleration. You are like, God, I want you to speed up the natural process. Friends, this is an important truth I want us to grab this morning for all of us here in this room. Listen carefully. God can do more in 10 minutes in your life than you can do in 10 years if you will only do it the way He wants us to do things. And that's why the Bible says, his ways are higher than our ways. These four guys had been fishing, out, fishing all night and they were unsuccessful. They came home with empty buckets, but next minute that they do what Jesus asked them to do. And what happens? They go from empty to overflowing. Empty to overflowing. That's the title of my message this morning. Empty to overflowing. I'm praying for people here in this room. Maybe you feel like empty right now. I pray that we will not just be hearers of God's word. As we apply the word of God, I pray that people in this room, you will go from empty to overflowing. Can I get an amen this morning? In fact, when they did what Jesus asked them to do, they didn't just go from empty to overflowing. The Bible says their boat is going to sink under the load, uh, they, had to, they had to call out to the other fishing partners to come and help them. I pray that through the power of the Holy Spirit, when you go from empty to overflowing, we can declare that I'm not just blessed, but I'm blessed to be a blessing. Can I get an amen this morning? That's the miracle of acceleration that I'm talking about. And guess what? When we, fa when we, when we experience that miracle, we don't get the credit for it. You don't get credit for it. God gets the glory for it. People go, only God. It is only possible because of God. So that, that, what's the difference between emptiness and overflowing? The answer is simple, Jesus. Jesus. It's not a principle. It's not a formula. It's a person, and his name is Jesus. I really believe there are people here this morning, you feel like those four disciples who came back with empty buckets, You've been working hard. You've been giving it, giving it all, your all, your best shot. You've been going above and beyond and doing long hours at work, trying so hard to improve your marriage, your relationships. Maybe at work, you're facing something and you've been giving it your all and you know, you're working in your life, your family and your finances and you feel like, boy, I feel so empty. I feel empty. So empty. Today I pray that the, through the power of the Holy Spirit, you will go from empty to overflowing. What's the difference? Jesus. Jesus. Maybe you feel stressed. You feel worried. I've, I've spoke about worry last week. It's interesting. I was telling some of our team during the week. We say Christmas. We talk about the Prince of Peace. But when it comes to the end of the year, everybody's, you know, stressed and busy and, you know, if there's a car park, there's three people trying to, you know, fight for the same car park. And, um, you know, the, the, you go to the supermarket and everybody is like, you know, stressed out, trying to, you know, buy things. And, you know, I see couples, you know, you see the wife putting all the stuff uh, in the, in the, in the um, shopping cart and you see the husbands or the other way around reading the price pair, prices and putting things back. And, and, uh, and now they're holding up the whole thing. And I'm like, I'm a pastor. Can I I step in and, and be the mediator, uh, you know, or can you just let me go first and you guys carry on fighting? But what I'm trying to say is that we say Christmas is peace, but then there can be chaos. But today I pray that you will experience peace from God, that, that we will know that we won't just pursue the blessing, but we will pursue the one who gives the blessing. So three ingredients needed to go from empty to overflowing. Here's the first one, number one, write this down. Total surrender. 
total surrender. How do we surrender? How do we do that? The starting point is to get Jesus on the boat. Get Jesus on the boat. Luke 5, 3. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push it out into the water. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. Now these guys have been catching, I mean, were fishing all night, caught nothing. In 10 minutes, they are catching more, they can, more than they can handle. What's the difference? They're in the same boat, same lake, lake, same fishing nets, same fishermen. Everything is the same. The only difference between nothing and fullness is that Jesus is in the boat. Jesus is in the boat. Can I tell you, if we want to move from empty to overflowing, we need to give Jesus access to our boat. We need to give Jesus access to our boat. I want us to use the boat as, as an example of our lives. It means, what does it mean to have Jesus in your boat? It means total surrender. It means dedication. It means total obedience to Him. He, he becomes the captain of our boat. Here's the truth. You make your boat a platform for Him to do His work in your life. We say, Jesus, I give you total access to every area of my life. What am I trying to say? Listen carefully. If Jesus is not Lord of all, He is not Lord at all. Sometimes we can say, Jesus, you have access here, you have access here, you have access here, but not here. But giving access is saying, God, complete surrender. There are only two choices in life. I can be either in control or I can be in complete surrender, but I can't have both. If I'm in control, then I'm responsible for my life. But guess what? If I surrender, He is, he is responsible. I give Him access to every area of my life. We want Jesus to bless your boat. Then we need to put Him first. And that's why I love this verse, Matthew 6, But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Order matters. It says seek first, not second, not third, not fourth, not last. Seek first. Guess what? We've got to get our priorities right. Whatever you want God to bless, guess what? You've got to put Him first in that area. You want God to bless your time? You need to give Him the first part of your day where you say, God, I'm putting you first. Guess what? I want to wake up in the morning and I want to think about the things. I want to, I want to, I want to make sure that God has my attention. Not what I'm concerned about, not what I'm worried about, not what, not what I'm anxious about. So I put him first. That's called having a time with God or devotional time with God. You want God to bless your week? You give him the first day of your week. And that's why we gather together as a church on Sunday. In fact, you are great. You were here at the first service. Uh, you know, good on you. Uh, you know, you're, you're 9 a.m., you're here. You're saying, God, we put you first. Guess what? We gather on Sunday and we scatter during the week to be the church. So, so we put him first by coming together to meet with God. You want God to bless your money. Money, honor, you, honor him first with your finances. You give him the first portion of your finances. That's called tithing. It's in the Bible. You want God to bless your relationships. Relationships. Listen to this carefully. You first seek a relationship with Him and all your other relationships will be blessed because of it. Can I tell you, if I want, to be, if I want this to be good, I need to make sure this is good. Because if this is not good, that's going to be hard. So that's why the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. Here's a second one, number two. The second ingredient needed to go from emptiness to overflowing is unquestioning obedience. Unquestioning obedience, Luke 5, 4. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, now go out where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Do you know how difficult it would have been for Peter and the crew to do what Jesus asked them to do? They are professional fishermen. They're not amateur fishermen. They're not having a weekend fishing trip. This is not a hobby. This was their family trade. They grew up fishing. They're professionals. They're experts. But here's the thing. Sometimes even when you're a professional, you fish all night and catch nothing. They've tried everything. Nothing has worked. And now Jesus is saying, guys, 
let's go back. Let's go deeper and, and put the fishing nets down. I love Peter's response. Luke 5.5, 5, Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But listen to this. But because you say so, because you say so. I want everybody to say those words on the count of three. One, two, three. Because you say so. I want you to write those words down. I'm sure Peter was like, Jesus, are you sure about this? Maybe not fishing all night. You had a good sleep and now you want us to go back and go fishing again. I'm sure he was thinking in his head, oh, I don't feel like doing this. Really? Really? But I love his response. Because you say so. That's how I want to live my life. Because you say so. Sometimes God will ask us to do things. It doesn't make sense, but we do them. Why? Because you say so. Listen to some of the things that Jesus asked us to do. It won't make sense. Listen to this. If someone strikes you on the cheek, turn the other cheek. Lord, really annoys me. I know I'm right and they're wrong, but because you say so, don't come and slap me after the service. Anyway, number two, if someone curses you, you bless them. Don't curse them back. Lord, I will do it because you say so. If someone asks you for your shirt, give them your coat too. Give them more than they expect. Lord, Lord, I say, God, I really like this jacket, but because you say so. Someone says, go a mile. Jesus says, go two. Jesus says, give and it will be given to you, Lord. It doesn't make sense. They hurt me. They betrayed me. They said this about me. They did that to my family. That happened. But because you say so. Why do we do that? Because we don't do it for the applause of man. You do it for an audience of one. And guess what? You will never go wrong obeying God. Because you say so. I want us to know three things about Peter's obedience. Write this down. Number one, Peter doesn't argue with Jesus. He doesn't argue with Jesus. He doesn't say, excuse me, Lord. Let's have a conversation. I'm the professional. You're a carpenter. What do you know about fishing? I've been on the fishing magazine for so many years. I'm the expert here. You're a carpenter. And you're telling me how to fish. Come on, buddy. No, he doesn't say that. He doesn't say, okay, guys, let's have a committee meeting now. Let's vote. Who's with Jesus? No, he doesn't say that. He doesn't argue with Jesus. The second thing about Peter's obedience is he doesn't delay. He doesn't delay. He doesn't say, Jesus, great idea. I really like this. I like your idea. But guess what? I'm a bit tired, sweaty, dirty, hungry. We've been out fishing all night. Can you just give me a few hours? Let me go home, have a shower, have a cup of tea, spend some time with my wife and kids. Let me have a nap and, and you know, just check the newspaper and then, I'll, and then I'll come back and we'll give it a go. No, he doesn't say that. Do you realize that delayed obedience is still disobedience? Delayed obedience is still disobedience. The blessing is in the obedience. I never forget, I was ministering at a conference and one of the speakers, the other speaker was Jim Stinton and I'll never forget a story that Jim shared with the conference. He said uh, the day before during the lunch break, break he, we were in Tauranga and he went for a walk and he was standing by the uh, bridge just to get some fresh air and he was just standing there and he noticed a man on the other side of the bridge and God spoke to Jim Stinton and said, Jim, I want you to go to that person standing over there and I want you to give him $20. And Jim said, I only had $20 in my pocket. And he was like, well, the Lord knew I had $20. And he was like, God, I, I was going to buy something on the way back. And I've only got $20. I haven't got any other cash. Can I, can I, can I, can I give him $10? Uh, and then God was like, no, I want you to give him $20. And Jim said he was like arguing with God back and forth, back and forth. God. Then he was like, okay, I'm just going to give the $20. And he, and he walked across the uh, bridge and he said to the man, Look, I just want to let you know, this may freak you out a little bit, but my name is Jim, and, um, and, uh, and I'm speaking at a conference, at a Christian conference, but I've just been sensing the Lord saying to me that I should give you $20. 
And the guy just stood there, shocked. And he said to Jim, true story. I'll never forget the story. Jim said, this guy said, I saw you on the other side of the bridge. I'm going through a difficult um, stage in my life and everything is falling apart. I was standing at this bridge to jump. But I said, something said to me, don't jump. I knew God was speaking to me. And I said to God, you see this guy on the other side of the bridge? If he gives me $20, I won't jump. And Jim said, I was so glad I didn't give him $10. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and guess what? He gave the guy the $20 and he prayed with him and he led him back to the Lord again. Can I tell you, the blessing is in the obedience. What has God asked us to do that we are not doing? Sometimes people come and say, oh, Pastor, I wanted to um, talk to you about this. And they're like, God told me to do this. But I want to know, what do you think? I was like, I love you. I want the very best for you. But if God's asked us to do something, what are we, what are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? Maybe God's been talking to you about getting baptized, but you have been putting it off. Can I tell you, get baptized next Sunday. Second service, we've got baptisms happening. Get baptized, last baptism service for the year. Why don't you finish the year strong by publicly declaring that Jesus is the Lord of your life. Number two, maybe you, you, God's been talking to you about joining a life group or leading a life group, but you've been putting it off. Or maybe God's been telling you about telling someone at work, your co-worker about Jesus, and you've been nervous and you've been putting it off. Pray, God, give me the boldness and the courage to tell somebody about Jesus. Maybe God's been telling you to go to Bible college or whatever God's asked you to do, what is it that you're putting off, that you've been putting it off? Listen to this, Luke 5, 4. Jesus said, put it out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. I want you to circle the words deep water. Jesus says, I want you to launch into deep water. Why deep water? Because God wants us to take a risk. There's no faith without risks. He says, launch out into deep water and put your nets down. Why deep water? Can I tell you? That's where the big fish are. That's, why, that's where they are. I really believe with all my heart there are people here in this room watching online. God is saying to you, it's time to stop living on the shore. Stop paddling around shallow waters. God is saying, don't be afraid. Don't let the waves or the wind stop you from stepping out for God. Step out. Go deep. He, he is, God has bigger, greater plans for you. Can I tell you, when you take faith steps, they look a bit scary. But guess what? We don't keep our eyes fixed on our fears or for our impossible situations. Can I tell you, if God can reunite families after two and a half years, after three, three years, someone's legs was meant to be amputated. Can I tell you, we put our eyes on Jesus and make sure Jesus is in our boat. Can I get an amen? amen. Remember, the Bible says we are more than conquerors through Christ. Do you realize that you have the DNA of the Almighty God? You come from a bloodline of champions. Moses part of the Red Sea. There's great faith in your bloodline. David, a shepherd, defeated Goliath. There is courage in your bloodline. Samson toppled a building. Guess what? There is supernatural strength in your bloodline. Daniel spent an entire lion and he was not, sorry, Daniel, not in a lion, in the lion's den. Uh, and he was not hurt by the lions. Guess why? Because divine protection flows through your bloodline. Nehemiah rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem when all the odds were against him. Determination and persistence flows through your bloodline. Queen Esther put her life on the line to save God's people. Sacrifice, sacrifice and heroism is in your bloodline. What am I trying to say? Miracles never happen in the comfort zone. Often we don't want to take steps of faith because we are afraid of failure. And today God is saying miracles happen in the deep water. God is saying step out, step out, take a risk, launch out into the deep water. Listen carefully, obeying Jesus sometimes looks scary, risky, and dangerous, but it's the most rewarding way to love. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Number three, third thing needed, total surrender, unquestioning obedience. Number three, unfavor, unwavering faith. Unwavering faith. If I could ask Alex to join on the keys for a moment. 
if we've got Jesus in our boat, we are on his plan, holding on to his promises. And guess what? We've got to expect him to turn things around. First Thessalonians 5.24. The one who called you is completely depend, dependable. If he said it, he will do it. I love that. If he said it, he will do it. Friends, if God said it, he will do it. God cannot lie. God cannot lie. You can expect God to turn things around. What happens when the disciples obeyed Jesus? And this time their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. The, uh, tear. A shout for help. Tear, tear, whatever it is. A shout for help brought their partners in the other boat. And soon their boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. They had his presence, his plan, his promise, and they went from empty to overflowing. You too have this morning, you have his presence, his plan, his promise. The three Ps, write it down. Presence, promise, plan. Presence, promise, plan. I really believe there are people here this morning, maybe you're here today and you're like, Boyd, I need to move from empty to overflowing. Maybe you feel empty right now. What is it that you need to do? Is it total surrender? Do you need to give Jesus total access? God, I give you control over every area of my life. Total surrender. Maybe you're here today and God's asked you to do something and you've been putting it off. God's saying it's time to do it. Maybe you've surrendered, you've done it, and God is saying you need to have faith. Keep trusting God. Keep trusting His timing. Would you bow your heads in prayer or look across this room? If you're here today and you're like, Boyd, I want to give Jesus total surrender, total access to every area of my life. The starting point is Jesus. We never like to close our services without giving people an opportunity to say yes to Jesus. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Like I said before, God can do more in 10 minutes in your life with what you can do in 10 years of your life on your own. Today, would you give Him access to every area of your life? Today, will you say, Jesus, I invite you into my life. I ask you for forgiveness. Would you, make the Lord, would you be the Lord of my life? I give you control access to every area of my life. I want my past forgiven. I want, I want to be set free from my past. I need a brand new start in Jesus. In a moment, I'd love to invite you in a prayer. While every eye closed, every head bowed, if you're here today and you're like, Boyd, that's me. If you're watching on um, line, I want you to go ahead and press that button. If you're here today, and you're like, yes, that's me. On the count of three, I want you to quickly put your hand up. The rest of the church, we're gonna clap and celebrate as people make the most important decision of their life. One, two, three. Wherever you are, would you mind putting your hand up? Come on, let's celebrate as people say yes to Jesus online and in the room. This is what I want us to do. You made the best decision of your life. Maybe you were scared to put your hand up, but can I encourage you to repeat this prayer after me online and in the room, the most powerful prayer that we can pray. Come on, let's all pray it nice and loud together. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I, confess I'm a sinner, I confess I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. In need of a savior. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I declare you the Lord of my life. I declare you the Lord of my life. I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. I'm no longer a slave to sin. I'm no longer a slave to sin. I'm a child sin. of God. I'm a child of God. I surrender my life to you. I surrender my life to in you. Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, let's celebrate one more time. Every person that prayed that prayer in the room and online. Now, can I tell you, praying that prayer is important, but I want you to do one more thing. On your way out, you will see a team of people with a blue t-shirt with the words, count me in. They want to give you a Bible. They want to pray with you. And can I encourage you to get baptized? Next week is baptism. So make sure you register your name or we've got an orange connect card. Make sure you fill out. Proud of you made the best decision of your life. Come on, let's stand to our feet. We're going to worship the Lord. I'm going to ask the team to sing that song. I'll stand with arms high, hearts, hearts abandoned. Let's make that, make that a declaration today. And let's pray. Whatever you're facing, we're moving from emptiness to overflowing. Emptiness to overflowing. And the beulah is going to come and close the service. Come on, let's sing it. Let's declare it. I'm the one